you've landed on a no site no problem YouTube channel today's video is going to be quite different than what you are used to seeing from me we're not out playing in the mud not acting crazy we're not showing you how to fix anything this video is blindness related and I'm gonna start doing one of these videos a video once a month about a blind related topic and today we're going to be talking about Kelvin who was my English chocolate lab and I got him from Pilot Dogs out of Columbus, Ohio. Can't say enough good stuff about the campus. Excellent staff. Um, just but a great experience. And most importantly, I got the dream dog of my life. I've always wanted a chocolate lab. And I've always had yellow labs prior. And they've all been wonderful. They've all been beautiful. But Kelvin's a little extra special in my heart. So today's video, I'm just hoping to kind of educate you a little bit on some of the do's and the don'ts, what's appropriate, what's not. And at the end of me talking and boring you to death, you'll see Kelvin and I working in different settings out in the community. So I hope you watch it to the end. If you like what you see, please subscribe, smash that notification bell, and turn on all notifications so you know next time we post a video. So without further ado, here we go. So he said, this, this is Kelvin. Hey, look up. Look up there. Mm -hmm. Can you say hi? So anyways, Kelvin and I work together as a team. Oftentimes, I hear people make comments like, Kelvin is amazing. Um, you're amazing. Okay, we're, we're pretty cool, but we're not amazing. It's really teamwork. Um, these dogs are born to be a guide from birth. They go into a puppy raiser home that goes on for a year after the year is done where they teach the dog basic obedience and socialism. Then it goes to the school, goes back to the kennel, and that's when the trainers start teaching the dog to be a guide. And that's pretty amazing within itself. So Calvin's job is to get me wherever I need to go safely. Now, that does not mean we get home from the school and I say, Calvin, let's go to the store. You don't know what I'm talking about. It's my job to know where I'm at at any given time, any given situation. I have to have situational awareness and you have to have good mobility skills. And then you can teach your dog where you want to go. And he will assist you across streets, up and down stairs, wherever you need to do. That's his job, just to help guide you around obstacles. Um, like I said, steps, curves, escalators, revolving doors. He's trained to find a seat. He's trained to find elevators. So, you know, we work together as a team. And that's really what it comes down to. The more obedience you do with your dog, the more you work your dog, the better team you're going to be. And essentially, you can get dropped off in a strange area. And you can use different navigation devices. And between you and your dog, you'll be able to get around safely. I can't stress that enough. And let's talk about independence for a minute, because that's really important to me. Um, it's, it's the simple things, being able to take Kelvin and walk to the post office, or walk to work, or walk and get my favorite cup of coffee, which happens to be Duncan, if you're listening out there. <laughs> Anyways, to be able to do that safely and without hanging on to Pam or another sighted guide or using my cane, brings a whole level of independence that I really can't even put into words. And let's face it, the more independent you are, the more self-sufficient you're gonna become, you're gonna feel better about yourself, you're gonna be more comfortable. And that does a whole lot for somebody's self-esteem. Let's see, so let's talk about some of the really important rules because I get asked all kinds of questions almost daily. And here's probably the most important thing I can stress to any of you guys who may be watching this to educate you and hopefully you can pass it on to your children or your grandchildren, um, co-worker at the office. When you see anybody out with a service dog, whether it's a blind person or maybe somebody in a wheelchair as an example, please do not walk up and just start petting the dog. And here's why. We could be crossing a street, for example, and yes, we cross four to six lanes of traffic with lights and all kinds of crazy stuff. If 
he sees you coming or anybody and he knows he's going to get pet, he could very easily pull me into oncoming traffic. And that could have a really bad end result, obviously. I know Kelvin's cute and all the dogs are cute. You guys want to pet them and scratch their head. I get it. I really do. And I hate telling people no, but I have to because it's a safety thing. Um, furthermore, if it looks like we're in trouble, just maybe lightly tap us on the shoulder and say, hey, do you need any assistance? Are you okay? And if we tell you no, we're good. We, you know, we may look a little goofy trying to figure something out, but we will figure it out. Um, but that's honestly the best approach. Don't grab the dog's harness. Don't, don't grab the dog's leash. Don't interact with the dog at all. He said, lightly maybe tap us on the arm or the shoulder and just say, do you need assistance? And if we do, we are going to tell you. Um, second thing is please don't try to feed our dogs. Um, again, that, that's another distraction. Um, labs and especially Kelvin, they all got the sad eyes and they look like they're starving and they want to eat the world. But truth be told, they're very well fed and they're perfectly taken care of. So, you know, you, you honestly, you, you don't have to feed them, I promise. What else do I want to touch on today? Um, what do you think, Pam? Have I covered everything? Mm -hmm. um, and yes, my sister <laughs> has, has the camera, of course. No, I think you you covered the bases pretty well. Calvin, quiet. I think that'll give people a little bit of knowledge, and if they have questions, they can they can ask, and we can reply in the comments. Yes, and and I encourage you guys, please don't be afraid to ask questions. You can always you know write us in the comments. We always reply to everybody. Um, you can find us all over social media, and I, I do want to say this: a guide dog or a pilot dog, if you want to say, is not for everybody. It is a lot of extra work. Um, at first, it can seem a little overwhelming, especially if you've never had a dog before and you're a former cane user and you are making the transition into having a guide dog. Or even if you're just a, a newly blind person, never even had a cane, but you want to use a dog. Well, if you have your mobility, orientation mobility training, you have, and you learn how to use a cane, then you can transition to a dog. But here's the point I'm getting at. For new people, it is a big transition. The dog wants to go out. It doesn't matter if it's raining, if it's snowing, if it's 20 degrees or 100 degrees. The dog is going to want to go out to relieve themselves. The dog's going to want to be worked. That's what they're. That's why you have them. That's what they're meant for. Um, so you know, and then there's vet care. There's constant grooming. There's vet visits. There's feeding there, there there is a lot but i promise you once you build it into your daily routine you don't even think about it it's just muscle memory second nature um so i promise you the the struggles you're going to go through at first are very normal and real but once you settle in you're going to find it's the most rewarding gift you can ever hope to receive and i do say gift because there is no charge for a guide dog it's all you know completely free from your flights to the school to your lodging um, to, to your pet some schools do offer a little uh, relief for uh, vet care if you need it but every school is different so I can't really speak upon that so I think I've bored all of you enough to death um, but I do hope you find this video helpful and Calvin and I both say thank you so much and cheers for now I also like to just say, though, is how do the schools allow you to get the dogs for free? Because obviously it's not free to raise them. It costs, like, how do they get their money to raise the dogs? They're non-for-profit organizations, so um, you can always donate to a school of your choice. They do different charity events, and you know, they get many ways they can raise money. Oh, that's pretty cool. It okay. is very cool. It's, it's just a wonderful program. Um, and, and, and in full disclosure, I was a little reluctant to go to Pilot Dog at first based on some things that I had heard. And I'm here to tell you firsthand, the staff there is absolutely phenomenal. From the, the trainers to the supervisors to the, um, we'll call them house parents, if you will, or supervisors at nighttime to the volunteers, uh, the kitchen staff, I mean, everybody has been absolutely phenomenal. So I highly, highly encourage, you know, 
Put them on your list of schools you may like to attend and check them out and give them a chance. You will not be disappointed. And I'm going to stress one more time. I don't care where you get your guide dog from. The work just begins when you get home. It just begins. So if you think you're going to go home and have this miraculous relationship, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not going to happen that way. Um, pretend you're dating and you're just getting into that scene. It's very much the same thing with a, with a oh. dog. You know, it's, you're, you're dating one another. You're learning each other's habits. Um, you, you know, you're, you're doing obedience. You're constantly training the dog. And, and, and also rewarding them with praise and, and sometimes a treat here or there. You know, it's, it's a work in progress. But usually after six months, most people should be working like a well-oiled machine. Um, yeah, Calvin's just been phenomenal. I, I, again, I can't say enough good stuff. So anyways, again, I bored you enough. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, I hope you find this video helpful and I hope you enjoy watching us out in the community. Until next time. And now I'm going to give you a small demonstration of how Kelvin helps me daily.